Hello and welcome back. Now, for one of the most exciting points of this tournament, we are going to find out who is playing who in the bracket. So we are going to populate that in just a few seconds. Joining me here on the panel to begin with, we've assembled a crack team of experts. Gosiami, Bravo and Gaskin are all joining us here. Um, guys, first of all, how have you found the tournament so far? Absolutely loving it. I mean, it's it's been amazing up here watching all the action all day. And I, I got to think that we have the best seat in the house, Bryce, because, I mean, we not only get to watch the main stage from here, yeah. but we get to see the intense matches here on the side stations yeah, as well. Yeah, we certainly do. Yeah, I'm so jealous of you guys. That you got to see that Dignitas game. Like, I wanted to see what Fabi did. <laughs> That's true. That's cool. well, speed was loud. We, we, do, we do have all eight POVs in the booth, though. Mm. So we, we get a, a pretty complete experience. All right. Solid. I will be honest with you. Seeing that Dignitas game was great, but also at the same time heartbreaking. The emotion that ran through those players is, yeah. is something something that's really kind of high. I mean, you just feel it. I feel oh, like sure. I'm, I'm going to see Moe's still sitting in that chair for like the rest of my life. Every time I see an <laughs> ESL chair, I just, uh, it's, it hurts. I mean, I was uh, pretty brutal. I was uh, probably the toughest group here, I mean, yeah. this weekend. Oh, uh, one team wasn't going to make it out. I don't think any of us, though, expected it would be Dignitas. Yeah, and Dignitas were kind of the, the biggest chance of upsetting Epsilon here. Like, yeah. In my opinion, we all said they were second, first for them to go out in the groups. Right. That's just heartbreaking. So I have an interesting question, actually, uh, and this, this really is to do with benchmarking where we think teams are. Now, Millennium and Fabi beat Dignitas. Do you think in this mind that this is just a bad day for Dignitas, or are we looking at some serious firepower in the terms of both Millennium and Fab? Because bearing in mind they're going to drop into the bracket. I mean, Millennium a second, and they beat Dignitas. Does this mean we could see another upset? I mean, possibly. I mean, when you look at how, how Fabi played today, they not only, you know, 2 0 or excuse me, I guess 1 0 Dignitas, but they also 2 0 Millennium, right? And we did see Millennium get, I mean, extremely hype when they did beat Dignitas. But at the same time, I know that those matches were a lot closer than the Fabi one was, right? 3 0 for them. So uh, I, I got to think that Fabi is a little bit a step ahead of Millennium, but hey, you never know. Maybe Millennium uh, just didn't match up as well as they thought it would. Can I just say, Moe's left Fabi. For Dignitas. Heartbreaking. It it's, certainly is. Yeah, I see it in your eyes, Ghost. I see it. You you feel his pain now, even more <laughs> sat in that chair. Uh, I mean, yeah, when it comes to Halo, uh, I think Bravo can attest to this, that the fact that karma will always bite you in the ass. Whether you boot a player off or right. you are the guy that's cocky, taking the high horse and leaving the team, uh, it's, it's never going to work out I mean, for It's you. a story in the U.S. too, right? It's a story in the yeah. U.S. too, right? I mean, with Lethal leaving EG to play on CLG. Granted, there there's is. still a lot more to play for for CLG. They yeah. can still play for the World Championship Finals. A lot of people I talk to think that they still may take that yep. from EG. However, with the case of Dignitas, uh, you know, the, it's their, their it's story has it's been written. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to the important part of today. It's time for the group draw. So we're going to bring up the bracket, completely unpopulated. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to watch this here. Now, I believe it's all ones versus all twos. That's how this should bracket should go down. So we're going to go for it now. I believe if this should work, we'll see if the magical technical production team can do this. Uh, let's start populating the first square and find out who's the first team in. There we go. First game. Oh, wow. Excel versus Vitality. Very quick first reaction. Uh, amazing matchup. I mean, we <laughs> yeah. know that Vitality came out swinging. We saw them doing amazing today. Excel as well. And I think that if Riot needs to prove that he's, he's worth it, this is another another obstacle in his way, without I think a that's doubt. The best draw that XL could have got. I think they'll be good, they'll be confident going into that series. Looking at the other teams they could have played to play Vitality, yeah. that's that's a great draw for them. Okay, fair enough. Right, well, let's bring the bracket back up then. Uh, let's have a look who's going to be in the second slot for this one. Here we go. Let's have a little look. It is quarterfinal number two. Will be Fab versus oh, Pulse. Oh, man. Wow. Now, Pulse is the number one French team, and Fabi have already made a big statement here this weekend. Reactions? <sighs> it's going to be a great series, too. I mean, of course, every series we get from here on out is going to be fantastic, but <laughs> uh, I cannot wait to watch those two play, especially now we've seen what Fabi did in their group. Yeah, speed is a wrecking house. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch that. I mean, one of those two teams are going to be going to Worlds. If you had said that but at the start of the day, we'd be like, nah. Now, all four UK teams, no, Pulse or Fabi, one of those is going <laughs> to world. <laughs> hey, uh, Fabi really came out today swinging. So if there's, in my opinion, if there's any team that should be there, especially off of today's wins, it's them. They, they proved to me that they have that tournament atmosphere. All right, well, it's time then for quarterfinal number three as we bring that one up here. And the teams that will be playing in this one is Epsilon mm. versus Supremacy. 
So, brother, I'm going to ask you, what do you think of that matchup? I mean, uh, I think Epsilon looks too strong. I think they're going to blow right past that match against Supremacy, if you ask me. I think uh, they just look too good, right? I mean, they're playing, like like Simpson, uh, excuse me, like Gaskin and I were talking about, uh, they're playing this conservative, aggressive style that I really respect. Yep. I think they're setting great habits for themselves. I don't see anything almost out of their game that looks like it's going to be a problem for them later in the tournament for me. Uh, that's probably a 3 -0. I think we're in best of fives now in those quarters, Yes, right? we are. We yeah. are in best of fives. The best of fives of the golden ticket. So, once more, let's bring up that bracket and populate like that final game with the final two teams for quarterfinal number four. Of course, Infused versus Millennium. Wow. Now... Obviously, we've already seen one upset from Millennium. Can they do it again? It's a big deal. I mean, we saw Millennium beat Dignan Haas, right? And I know that they ended up do, you know, losing to Fabi. However, when you look at what happened earlier today, right? Vitality uh -huh. showed a little bit of, of weariness in Infuse, right? We saw Infuse lose Coliseum Slayer game yeah. two to Vitality. So I think that that kind of shows a little bit of, you know, a little bit of worry for them. So I'm, I'm curious to see if Infuse is going to make it realistically. Yeah, for me, I mean, that's the, the, the test of what is Infused made of, how far can yep. they go in this world championship, right? That series right there is going to tell us a lot about what they're able to do. I mean, what's interesting is Infused and Epsilon both on the same side of the bracket. So oh. they are, if they win the games, they're both going to meet in the semis, which means in the final, we're going to be maybe seeing someone like XL, maybe someone like Fabi. They're going to be looking at this thing. Amazing. This is a real big chance at some awesome prize money here. Once they've got that top four spot. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's right. the important one. <laughs> Don't skip past heads. that. Like, America. I, I see what you're saying, though. With the way the brackets did work out, it is going to be an exciting one, especially with, you know, two of these matches happening tonight. It most certainly is. And speaking of matches happening tonight, I believe we're going to have the first one come up straight away onto the uh, game now. We're actually ready for it. I believe we have an interview first, though. So, Mitch, over to you. Thank you very much, guys. It is getting close to the pointy end of things here, of course. Quarterfinals. We're going to kick off straight away. I love how smoothly we've gone straight into it. I have managed to wrestle up some gentlemen to have a chat with here, of course, with Renox and Snakey here on the desk. Uh, start with you, Snakey. How are you guys feeling about your group stage stuff and how are you feeling about the matchup here in the quarterfinals? Um, I'm very happy we won our group stages. You know, I know some people doubted us that Pet was going to beat us, so people weren't sure who was going to come out on top. So I'm just happy to come up on top and obviously get that W and come first in our group. Yep. And uh, Renix, of course, you a little bit of a shakier uh, journey through the bracket, but I mean, you've been putting the same group as Infused, and even you said they're a strong team. But obviously, coming out on top of Vinco, do you think over over the maps you played that you've really gotten to see uh, much of what these teams are going to be like. Do you feel like, obviously, going up against Vinko, who went 0-2 both times and losing that map to Infused, you're a little bit maybe having practiced as much as everyone else today? Uh, honestly, no, I don't think so. The, the team who has less practice is XL. We have one month of practice. They have almost yep. nothing. So I think I think it's going to be who plays the best now sure. on, on today, I mean. Well, on that note, Snakey, as well, it's true that you guys obviously more recently formed as Excel, not together yeah. for so long. Are you guys gelling today? Are you finding stuff today that you're improving on? Or do you think you've come into this, this tournament already having a lot of things nailed down? Um, I think, yeah, today is where we showed up. We've gelled a bit, you know, like, as I mean, we've only been teaming for a week, so we've been trying to do as much practice as we can. Um, but, yeah, I think it's hit or miss today. We're going to go hard or go home. Right? Yeah. Of course, Renox, uh, we've seen the draw now. We've seen uh, who's on what side of the bracket here. I mean, uh, honestly, like, uh, in all fairness, are you happy with this matchup? Do you, are you feeling confident going into this one? Or was there maybe another scenario you would have preferred? Honestly, I don't want to be overconfident going to, into this one. Uh, I think both teams can win. And uh, obviously, I'm happy we don't match up against Epsilon. But this match is anyone's matchup, honestly. All right, well, thank you very much, everyone. Feel free to shake hands now as we jump into this one. Vitality versus XL. Both have avoided, of course, Epsilon so far. We have to see if they can make it through from here. Winner of this game, of course, getting that golden ticket. Desk takes away. I'm keen to hear what you have to say about this matchup. Thank you very much. Yes, so we're about to send a team to the World Championship. Uh, and we were talk kind of remarking on the same thing they said there. This is a good draw for Vitality and Excel because they both kind of avoided the big fish of Epsilon. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, neither team wants to face them. And, and Ghost, you and I were talking about, you know, typically the motto amongst top Halo teams is you got to beat the best to be the best, right? It doesn't matter who you're showing up to play against. Correct. You beat everyone. However, when you're looking at a top four finish, meaning a ticket to the World Finals, 
The story, story, is a little, yeah, yeah. story is a little bit different. <laughs> All right, without. well, let's kind of jump straight into this one then. Let's go straight into the team sheets. Um, who do you want to jump on before? Gaskin, I'll let you choose since you're way over on the end there. <laughs> so far away. I know. <laughs> uh, we'll go with Excel. We want to see these boys. Like, these guys, uh -huh. absolutely incredible side. All right, well, take me through that kind of the XL squad then. You've seen these guys uh, a lot since they're from the UK. Yep. So we've got Snakey, Creepsy, Lunny, and Riot. Riot's obviously one of my ex teammates. Don't want to push that too much, but yeah. I he upgraded it. These guys. Yeah, yeah, he upgraded <laughs> massively. <laughs> um, but these guys, they've just gelled so well today. No one really knew what to expect Correct. from them. Like, they've had nothing to lose, and now they've, they've got a real chance at this top four, yeah. a chance for a ticket to America. Yeah, I mean, this is a special chance for them, right? Riot's kind of, I, I talked to him this morning, he's like, hey, this is the team I need to make it with, uh, and I think they've really stepped it up. Like you guys have said, they've gelled, but not only that, but they've gotten a draw that allows them to face off against Vitality instead of Epsilon for their ticket to the World Finals to get that spot, which is uh, quite special for them. I think they need to embrace that group draw and make sure that they make the most of this. I think that also applies to Vitality, of course, though. Uh, whichever team is able to cl close out this series knows that they're going to deserve that trip. Yeah, I think, I, th I think it's a big deal, too, because, I mean, when you look at Riots, right, this was his team. Yeah. He was the one that was that kind of left, right, because he wasn't meshing well with Halo 5. He wasn't adapting. Now he brings on these two up-and-comers, Snaking and Lunny, and he's got that action, right? They have that mentality, and you bring a creep easy along, and he's uh, even all the way back from Halo 3, I believe. So I mean, these guys have been around for a long time, and they're going to do well. Awesome. Well, let's jump onto the other side then, and let's talk about their opponent, Team Vitality. Who are we kind of keeping on here? Who do you think are the big guns? I mean, I would definitely say Botanist. We saw earlier today, I mean, the guy was just absolutely wrecking house, right? He wasn't just sniping well, but he was the, the glue to the team. He was making sure that everyone was rotating appropriately. I mean, the call, I can't say enough uh, about their Coliseum Slayer strategy. It was absolutely flawless. I told them myself, I haven't seen it, anything done that well yet. The synergy was completely on point. Um, they say Mephisto's their best sniper, but I, I didn't see him really pull off anything today, so I'm going to go with Botanist as my guy to look out for. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think the stuff we saw to him in the first series was pretty special. I think uh, Hitteborg and Mephisto's, Mephisto is playing well as well. Uh, so to, to me, I want to know if they can step it up because we saw like, a pretty solid series from yep. them when they lost that first one. Like you said, that Coliseum CTF was well. Their CTF Truth opening was strong. Yep. Their first uh, game, game opening was strong as well. So I'm kind of like wondering, can they play the long game? We know they did on Coliseum CTF, but what can they really do and bring in this series? What about you, Dan? I mean, there's some real personality in this game. You're gonna, both teams are going to get so loud. They're going to be shouting at each other. They're going to be giving the big one. They know what's on the line. <laughs> here. I mean, Riots was on the Infuse squad that lost to MGS when they did get the sheet masks out, so there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Like, he's going to want to get one up over these guys. All right, so I'm going to kind of ask you here, what do both teams need to do? Let's get into these keys to victory. Uh, for Excel, what do they need to do to secure that ticket to the World Championship? I yeah. just think they need to just get riots on form. Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy's I mean, so far, he's been monster. good. Yeah. Yeah, he's so far, I mean, I've been see what I've been seeing out of riots is he's hitting shots. He's not uh, sacrificing dumb deaths, right? He's on top of camo and power up times. And it's kind of the riots that we hope to see. Uh, I think he's been pretty consistent. If he plays that game, I think they'll be in good shape. 100%. Yeah, the leadership role has been absolutely phenomenal by him, right? We even saw him redirect that flag route. On, uh, on Fathom earlier today. So I think the guy just really has a, a really great outlook on how yeah. Halo 5 should be played and how it should be structured. Right, yeah, yeah. I did notice, actually, in that interview, if we just cast our mind back, it didn't seem to me Snakey was really fired up. You can't see he was oh, like, yeah. everybody's doubting us. We're still here. We still have a really good chance. I think yeah. if they, they nail this now, they'll be like, we made this over teams that are ranked higher than us. Like, well, we're, we're going. They've just gone from the fourth best UK team yeah. automatically to the third best UK team because we just said bye-bye to Dignitas. So that, there's a lot of passion for these guys. Right. Instantly, they rank up. It's great. Okay, let's jump on board with Vitality then. What do Vitality need to do to try and grab that ticket how can they win this? I think it's kind of the same keys we saw against every other po opponent that faced Excel, right? It's don't let Riots do what he's able to do. Uh, if you can kind of take him out in the same way yep. that team, teams need to take Jimbo out, they're going to be fine. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, and then I'll also touch on Renox a little bit earlier. I know that they did end up going against Finko Gaming, the South African team. Uh, so it was a little bit of a mismatch, if you will. But the guy put up some crazy stats now. Back in the, in, in the history of Halo, there are players that play better yeah. against, you know, the lesser-seeded teams, and there are players that play better against the higher-seeded teams. So maybe we'll see Renox kind of turn it around there as well. All right. Well, I believe this game is pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to very quickly ask for a scoreline. Gaskin, give me a scoreline. Uh, uh, three ones to XL. Okay, bravo. 
Yeah, I'll go three one Excel as well. Are you going to agree with him, Ghost Yami? Never. Three two Vitality. <laughs> right. Okay. Completely ignoring choice. the rest of the analyst panel there for Ghost Yami as usual. Now we hand over to not the Super Squad, but it is Strong Side and Sims. Please take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the commentary booth. My name is Sims, this handsome man is strong side. Dude, we are about to send one team to the World Finals. How hyped are we right now? These are going to be some of the best games we've seen this weekend, and what a matchup we have to start this off. These teams, honestly, I feel like they're pretty equally matched. Excel has riots. They've, their squad has been playing well. You see Snakey just smiling going into this match. So, honestly... Most of the guys predicted Excel, except for Ghost. Ghost thinks that the other team, Vitality, is going to win. That's why he's on the analyst desk. He's going to win. Here. We'll keep him outside. He's not coming inside the commentary booth. Rest in peace. Sorry, Ghost. Don't, what, please don't what's hit your me. prediction, Sims? My what's prediction, your prediction? I, simply because of what I've seen of these guys in the past at European Halo events, I think Vitality are going to take this. Really? That's, honestly, these guys are so underestimated, and they come to land, they tear it up, they turn up. However, there is a big problem that I see on this team, and it's Botanus. He needs to go huge. He is a monster when he gets going. Renox is possibly, for me, one of the best players in France, maybe even the best players in Europe. However, Botanus can have a hit-and-miss game. He is now into a quarterfinal match. He is literally a possibility of only three maps away of going to America and playing for two million dollars, which is absolutely absolutely mind-blowing he needs to step it up and he needs to do work but then again we all know halo is a team-based game and all four players need to do the same but we look across at that roster who they're playing against mike and that is a stacked out roster on excel definitely i mean hitteborg has definitely showed us that his shot is on point but let's take a quick look at the series right now they're playing a best of five series starting off with game number one fathom ctf game number two coliseum team slayer three eden strongholds four truth ctf and last but not least regret Team Slayer. And how much of a storyline would it be if we went all the way to game number five for regret? What an I iconic map name to go out, unfortunately, and not hit the world finals. But you know what? That's in the future. Now, now at present, it's all about Fathom CTF. I've seen Vitality play this map extremely well. We saw earlier on, I don't want to say Excel was struggling, but certainly from the Vitality that I've seen play, they have a very good setup for this. They always, Renox just literally just hounds top mid. And it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get him out of there. And because he's pivotally just pinched up there all the time, if he goes down, he'll drop, try and grab camo, work his way around through the garage. Or if he just dies, he will always be back up there. So they really need to cut him off and shut him down. Keep Botanus in the death screen, and they've got this. As you can see now on screen, handshakes across the board for XL from left to right. It's going to be XL Esports, Snakey, Creepsy, Lunny, and Riot. Below them, we're going to have Vitality, Renox, Hitterbog, Mephisto, and Botanist. Guys, for everyone at home who's just joining us, welcome along. This, of course, we are now into the quarterfinals. Best of five, game number one. These teams are fighting for the second spot at the world final. Shout out to everyone on Halo Waypoint, Reddit, Halo Team Beyond, HGF Live Tweets, and, of course, Halo Esportspedia. And for every single fan in the chat now, use the hashtag HaloWC. Tweet the stream, let everybody know what's going on. Mike, we're currently on board with Lunny. Let's break it down. All right, now let's actually hop on board with Snakey, who's just picked up camo. We saw this team excel, <laughs> excuse me, excel, yes, on this map earlier in the tournament. We saw Lunny actually go off with the camo and the railgun combo. And I was saying, if there's anybody you want on your team, it's Lunny to, to have that combo. These players are, honestly, they know how to play it. They get the control of top of the map. Let's hop on board with Lunny again now, who's can actually, you know, their team is on the bottom of the map. I think Riots is the only one top middle right now, playing it a little bit different than they did uh, here in the past in the, the tournament. So very, very surprising to see them play it this way right now. Railgun in hand, just hanging around the treehouse section, looking for one player, turns around, misses the first shot. Bonus will make him pay for missing that. You do not want to miss going up against that guy. Let's move across now to hit the bug, pushing inside the red treehouse, jumps up. Doesn't bother using the clamber, will get himself the lightsaber, moving down into the opposing forces, Gary. 
Sturridge. Lonnie will shut him down instantly. We'll get the call out. Back over to Creep Easy now. Looking for any players that want to challenge him in his red section. Going to push down onto Blue Vat. Decides to do the duck. Will drop down into bottom mid. Looking for anybody who's going to try and push Garage there. He's got the SMG in hand. If anyone wants to challenge this, in he goes a grenade. He's going to get hit markers on that as well. So they're going to push him. However, he's in dangerous waters here. I'm not a big fan of sitting bottom mid. Fair enough. There's nowhere for him to go. He keeps standing up as well, which is interesting. However, Luddy comes across with a very long range railgun there. Takes down one player. Botanus jumps across. That's going to be three players, maybe possibly even Sips. four now. This play actually worked out really well, though. He knew he had his team watching him from top mid. They had, their, they had the team spawning inside the base, so Vitality really had no way of getting him uh, to finish that kill in front of the base. So he actually played that really well. And now we've got Lunny, who's running the flag, making a move happen right here. <laughs> a perfect execution right now. I mean, he's not even getting touched right now. His team has got control of top middle. Riot's getting control as well at top middle with the railgun. He's got this flag back in his base. This could be a 1-0 off the start of the match. Yes, it is. 1-0. Excel is up. And there we see the stealth capture medal comes in. Nobody even challenged him. There's the lunch to take down the middle. He, he, you know what? He just didn't get... No one pushed him whatsoever. Perfect execution, as you said, Mike. They got them all four down. They run it through the garage, went up through the top. Down they came. And now we're back on board with Creeps. He's taking control of that top middle section, which is so important on Fathom. you said this time and time again. Not only is this, like, the major power weapon of the map, but it's the power play position. They're 1-0 up. They still don't want to get overzealous. How do we play this one out, Mike? Keep controlling top mid. Keep getting the control of camo. It's going to be up here and I, I want to say about 15 seconds. Losing control of top middle like that, that's not very good, but Snakey, while this is happening, is moving the flag all the way to front of their base. Are they going to be able to get this? Riot's looking to get some control here. Not allowing them to get the return. No, yes. Excuse me. They did get the return. Unfortunately, they're going to let that go, but yes, they do have the lead. They, they they need to just get control of these power, uh, excuse me, these power-ups and power weapons. And and really just, they, they don't want to just play defense. They, they want to end the game. There's a lot of time left in this game. And if you just play defensively, I mean, you're you're pretty much allowing the other team to just come back and win. Everybody dogpiling on that flag. They're really trying to get it in the base, but unfortunately it's come around to kick them in the backside as all members go down. We're going to see somebody else pushing over the top middle section. I'm not entirely sure there is. However, two people will come off the spawn. Finds riots over here on his owned by the VAT. Going to push up back and rotate it round to the treehouse section. Looking for support. He's got two members top mid. However, there are two other players top mid as well. They're going to get taken down by Lunny. That'll be a huge double kill now. Not entirely sure who that was. It was a Cosmo Fisto looking to try and collect that triple kill. Grenade goes in. One player pushing back into the treehouse. Trying to find anyone else who's there. He's getting shot in the back. Needs to be aware. The railgun is up. Looking for one player to try and collect that. That's going to be creep easy. He grabs that straight off the spawn. Puts some good shots down on Mephisto. Does he meet Snakey around the corner? Surely the assist medal comes in. You heard it click. There's the little golden arrow on the side. Cleans that one up. Two members down now for Vitality. One person on the little door. He's in a great position, Mike. What exactly does he need to be keep doing for his teammate? Just would you just say just slay like mad and let them do the objective? Yeah, well, honestly, when you have the rail gun in your top middle, yes, let your teammates do the objective. Your top mid, you're supposed to be giving cover exactly like that. Unfortunately, he is taken down, but while this is happening, Snakey is in the process of running the flag. He is unfortunately taken down as well. Lunny's trying to collect the flag here. Yes, he's going to be able to do it. This is actually a huge play. Massive if they kill. can get this flag back to the front of their base, this could guarantee the flag cap. He is rushing it. Wow. He is absolutely rushing it. I did not think that was going to be a good play, but he just forced that flag through, and they are solidifying cap number two. Lunny what a going play by massive. Lunny. How did he survive that second one? I like the little back down on Little Door. Survived it. Grenades came in. Thrust it straight forward. Shields were up. Nobody tagged him. One exactly the stealth capture of previous but you know what we're now up two to zero in this fathom ctf game lunny still trying to dominate every single time this top mid now every time we go to someone on xle sports mike they're always in the top middle section vitality at the moment lacking the top mid control what i said i expected them to do it's the key to success on this map you're able to get so many angles and and just get cut off so many angles as well so uh, if the enemy team tries to push out from their spawns and go for the, the, the flag carrier, and you're, you're just not going to be able to do that. And now we have riots running in the third flag. Are they going to be able to solidify this? Not getting... Yes, he does! 3-0, game number one. I can hear them here from the casting booth. Man, they are making some noise over there. And there you have it then. XL Esports will move one step closer to the World Championship. What an incredible game number one. We'll take a quick look at the stats in just a second.
and see how that one played up. But to be honest with you, I think, I really think Vitality got exceptionally outslid. There was no top middle control. 19 kills from Lunny, lighting a bonfire under this French roster moving down. Unfortunately, someone's ticking the kills off screen, but you can see by there we go. 13, 14, 9. 9 for the top 2 down. 7 and 5. Unfortunately, Hitterborg, 5 and 14. Not usually a huge stat like that we see out of him. Renox. You can tell 9 and 16, he was trying to be the Renox we know and love, being the cheeky flanker, being the nuisance, being the annoying French player that he is. However, because his team weren't with him, he kept getting shut down. Look at them deaths, 16 deaths, unfortunately. But you know what? That's not a bad thing because obviously it's objective, but I'm sorry when you're going out like that on a 3-0, there's all sorts of problems. XL take game number one. We're going to be moving into game two. How, how is this going to transfer side into game two? Do you think if they just keep playing like that? They're just going to break them in half? Honestly, with their playing like this, it's not looking good for Vitality right now. Uh, Excel is playing out of their minds right now. They're playing the correct way, playing it by the book, controlling top middle on Fathom, and making the flag runs happen. Right as you were asking me what do they need to do, there was a player top middle. He was getting charged by two players, and in the process of that happening, you had Snakey initiating the flag run. I don't think anyone on Vitality knew that the flag was even being, initiate, or being pulled at that time. They were so concentrated with that player top middle and he made such a good distraction they were able to get that second flag in and then even that third flag as well it just seemed that excel had top middle control the entire game so moving into game number two we'll bring the series layout up on screen in just a second but for, for just really one quick question mark that i want to i want to bring up the quarterfinal two game fab esports versus pulse gaming i'm i'm gonna be honest here I did not think at the start of, no, I don't even want to say start of today, but possibly even the start of World Finals, that they would have been going forward. One of those two teams, we need to take a moment just to appreciate that, Fab Esports or Pulse Gaming will be going to Worlds. That is, that is a statistic I did not think I'd be saying here, ladies and gentlemen. But looking on screen right now, we're moving into a Coliseum Team Slayer now. To be honest with you, Vitality really got a beating when it comes to the slaying part, but... Do you think that's going to be the same on this one? You know, maybe they talked about their strategy. Maybe they're, they're trying to change it up, watching the other teams play here. And, you know, honestly, in Slayers, you can turn it around, especially on a map like Coliseum. It's all about getting control of the sniper and getting control of the rockets. And we talk about this time and time again, controlling that sniper area, getting the sniper and the rockets there. The rockets excel so much in that area because of the close quarter areas, the close quarter fights that you get into. And then having the sniper kind of hang back in certain areas or even sniping from top bridge. Uh, the, the other team wants to refrain from going up to top rockets if they don't have control of the sniper bridge and sniper area so it, it's really going to come down to who has more teamwork we've seen teams have wolf pack teamwork where they just stay united and move around as a unit and then we've seen other teams who kind of just run into that wolf wolf pack one at a time and just keep dying left and right and speaking about doing that look at the players to watch right now it's Lunny versus Renox two individually talented slayers we've seen Lunny going off time and time again Quite a few people kind of shook Lunny off as the online kid because the amount of times that I've seen him, and I've played against him, and literally, he's just unkillable. And, but to transfer and do exactly what he does online to what he's doing here on LAN, he's putting up a very, very good show for us all, both in the Caster's Zest and you guys at home. Once again, welcome along to the EMEA Regional Finals, guys. If you are just joining us, remember, please tweet the stream, use the hashtag HaloWC, tell everybody, tell your entire family what's going on today. Today, we are sending two teams to Worlds tomorrow we will send another two so by the end of the weekend we will have five teams confirmed for the halo grand finals of the world championships again two million dollars on the line mike you if they win if if they win this series they are guaranteed to go to world finals yep. they are guaranteed money they are guaranteed a free 20k trip. they get whoever wins this is guaranteed 20k put it that way and the prize pool is still growing, Sims. Absolutely. That number could go up. And so there is still a lot on the line. Yes, they are playing incredibly well right now, exceptionally well, to be honest. Excel just needs to keep up that play style. Vitality, on the other hand, needs to just leave that game behind. Leave it in the past. It doesn't matter. That's the very nice thing about uh, a game by a a game five series. You're able to to kind of have a mistake or two in in a game, and then 
kind of bring it back later on throughout the series. So uh, I think going back and forth through this game, uh, it's it's going to be tough for Vitality. But, you know, there's a lot on the line. Things can happen. We saw what happened with Dignitas, and nobody saw that coming. No, nobody in their right mind ever saw that coming. And one thing I just want to touch on really quickly, Mike, obviously Vitality have been in the same position before. You know, they started the day off. They played infused. They lost the first game. They went on to win the second exactly what you said they need to shake it off ignore it crack on and move on left to right on screen guys heads up snakey creeps it Lunny, riots riots will be extremely happy especially getting on this roster moving off and getting dumped from infused at the start of all of this team slayer coliseum guys is going to be your number two game we're about to get this underway now let's have a look and see where we stand we're on board with riots i do believe off of the spawn mike what do you want to see him get up to all right, let's see Riots get these rockets. He's normally the player to, to help or get rockets. Looks like he's going to be the player to help get these rockets. He's picking up the scatter shot. Actually not helping to get rockets at all, just leaving, helping with the sniper side. Picks up a kill right there. Three down. And, and now they've got control of the sniper area. I believe they have sniper and rockets right now. Creepeasy actually just taken down with rockets. Uh, no one has them right now. Snakey, let's hop on board with Snakey after uh, Riots makes a play over here, staying alive. Snakey does have the sniper rifle. He is looking to pick off a player or two here. Just the sniper in his back pocket. Not able to finish that kill right there. That would have been a huge kill. The player has gotten away with the Rockets. Now he's lost sniper. Let's hop on board with Hitteborg. Did get a kill from the grave though. Hit now moving back into the base. Three to seven, the score. Slightly bringing it back, but a fair few kills on the board already for Excel Esports. Moving down into that red corner, just crouching around, waiting for anybody who wants to come and challenge him. Two Rockets in the barrel, guaranteed two kills in my opinion. Or at least there should be, but someone's thrusting away. Oh my word! Two Rockets and not a single hit. Hit marker, what a complete waste, unfortunately, but Mephisto has taken down one player, turns around, he's got the sniper rifle in hand, plenty of bullets to play with, oh, oh just put it, but unfortunately, you don't want to waste those happen. bullets, and also put one in the back of your teammate's head, unfortunately, that was, that was pretty bad as we now move up to it, 11 to 5. Everything seems to be going wrong, though, for Vitality, Mac, I've got to say. Sims, uh, I'd like to say right there, we saw Mephisto just sitting back with the sniper right there as his teammate Hitteborg, I, I believe, missed two rockets. Although he did miss those two rockets, uh, he was not getting help from his teammates sitting right onto the flag. And then we see a suicide from him as well, which you just seen on screen now. So we're now moving up to 14 to 12. <laughs> Everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong, unfortunately, for Vitality. Beatdown comes and in, gives him support. Great teamwork right there yep. by them. Just using the tag team. And also another a great cleanup kill right there. And that's really what you need to see uh, here in this type of matchup because these guys are playing for so much. They get to go to the States and play in the World Finals if they win this match. They need to be having excellent teamwork. And you see that coming out of Excel. 17 to 5 now. Snakey looking to do some damage. Rockies haven't been touched in a while. I believe that may be Riots to his left, who's trying to acquire those. That's going to be Riots indeed. Scopes in, puts a bullet between Mephisto's eyes, looking for any more players that want to challenge him. Going to move up onto Red Bridge to see if he can scope out a few on the spawn. Checks that back. Rocket corner for Blue. Nobody there. And just as we say that, he catches someone running in, so he's going to jump up. Stabilizers will kick in. Nobody's showing their face. They know if they get in the line of Snakey, they're losing their brain. It's getting splattered against the wall. This guy has some superb talent. Yeah, let's actually hop on board with Riots after he picks up this kill, who's trying to make a move with the Rockets on the other side of the map. Sniper is coming up, so this is a great position to be in when you have Rockets and Sniper is coming up. This is, I'd honestly say, this is a guaranteed kill. There it is, guaranteed kill. Can he get the double? No, he's going to get tag team right there. And unfortunately taken down the top on board with Lunny, who barely escapes. Nice survival tactics right there by Lunny. Unfortunately, he is taken down. Let's hop on board with Body now. They're trying to make a comeback, 9 to 25. It's still going to be pretty hard. They're going to need to turn this around and get control of not only the sniper area, but get control of sniper and rockets. Now, Body with the sniper. Let's see if he can do some damage. I, unfortunately, I think I may have just seen, in fact, Mephisto's got a kill, so I think the goose is no longer loose. However, Blaner comes back from Snakey's. That's going to be two sniper rifles in play on the map, looking over the red corner. He knows exactly where he is, so he needs to be careful. Botty now jumping up onto the blue BR, trying to find anybody else. S3 position now. Finds Creep Easy. 
little bit of half shields there. Easy kill for him, looking down the red bridge. Anyone else in that base wants to challenge him. He's going to try and put a blainer between the eyeballs, scoping in on red, see if anyone's going to come and help his teammate out on that corner. Rockets are about to pop, though. And then he turns around to find Hitterborg in trouble. Hitterborg goes down. He's not quite fast enough, which is a little bit of a shame. Bit more teamwork. He could have stopped that death from his team and also got a kill as well by cleaning it up. Still in the corner. Best position to be in, do you think, with a sniper rifle, Mike? I mean, right now, his teammates aren't pushed up, so I'd say, yeah, this isn't a bad position. He could be moving from cave over to elbow. Elbow's a little bit more popular uh, just because of the sight lines you're going to get. Here, you, you're very limited uh, with your sight lines. It's even almost better to be by the flag as well. Uh, we see riots just uh, actually just got picked off with rockets, and this game is really slowing down, 18 to 32. Uh, Vitality... I mean, with body, with the sniper here, he's not really doing too much. He's not able to do too much. Uh, he, he needs some help from his teammates to, to kind of expose the other team. Getting a nice kill here, not going to be able to pick up the double kill. But he was sitting in cave for quite some time, and he, he didn't see anyone. He wasn't able to, to help out and pick up a kill. Uh, just kind of... I, I almost want to say useless over in the cave there. Snakey Ants is back with a double kill on the kill feed. Snakey finally does go down. Botanus does get the call out for the one shot hiding in the corner. Grenade goes in looking for any hit markers. Someone chasing him now. Needs to be careful. There is a play you can see on the radar above him. However, his grenade comes back to haunt right as that he threw a while back. Splinter does come into effect by sitting there like a little bit of a landmine. Jumping up onto the sniper, in goes the grenade, see if anyone's going to be coming off of the spawn. Gets shot in the back, decides to turn around and give him a few cheeky shots. Doesn't actually manage to hit any of them. Renox's teammate in front of him, going one on one. Still not seeing that kill. Finally, Lunny goes down. One for Hitterborg as well. We're moving across to Renox now. Sniper rifle in hand and in the base of XLE Sports. They need to make something happen. They're only down by 10, now moved up to 11. They've kind of brought it back, Mike, but you've got to think, is it too little, too late? Honestly, I mean, they're bringing it back. It's I wouldn't say it's too little, too late just yet. They do have a sniper. If they can get these the next set of rockets and sniper, they, they have a fighting chance. Rockets are up. If they can get control of these right here, bring them back to a safe distance and, and bring them over to the sniper area, uh, they're going to have a really good Ooh. chance. But he is taken down by Snakey right in the face. That's not going to look good for him right now. 41 to 27. He's got an eye on Sniper, and he's taking him out. He knows that there's a player sitting on red flag. His teammates are pushing in, just collapsing perfectly, picking up another Sniper kill. And his teammates, you just saw the perfect execution, just collapsing on that team. They, they had nowhere to go. Every which way they were going to make a move, there is someone on Excel Esports waiting for them. Excel seems to be walking away with this one. Just does the sly little hobble over there's going to be puts a bullet for his teammate does seal the kill and again takes down his teammate at the same time but you know what he's going to put one on the board splinter net grenade goes flying across and that's another double kill hail mary straight across splinter net once again this splinter net is doing some serious damage now as he turns around to find any spawners looking in that blue corner he knows he has teammates over in the red side they're going to be i like what he's doing though fair enough he's got creep easy at the opposing side but he knows where they're going to be will push down onto the spawn of red corner they're now going to be pushing all the way over into blue Creep easy goes down, so he knows where they're going to be setting up. He'll be calling them out. Only two more kills. I think this is game set and match for XL. Yeah, it's not It's not looking good. Two kills. They've got Sniper. This This is pretty much over. And he's just Ooh. hitting another headshot with the Sniper. And that's going to be game number two to XL. So here we are then. XL only one game away from $20,000. And of course, one of four spots in the Halo World Championship grand finals out in the good old US of A. We'll take a look at the stats in just a second. Oh my god! I'm, I'm gosh, having a glimpse Sims. and by your face just then, I, if you guys at home could see stats. <laughs> 22 <laughs> and 3 by Snakey. What? Look at the damage dealt as well. Look at how much damage he was dealing. Wow. Power weapon kills 15, almost 50% on the accuracy, 20.3 I think we know what was wrong there. Excel just had complete control of the power weapons. Vitality wasn't able to get any of the power weapons throughout the entire game. And if they did, they had it for a very short time. Uh, looking, I really like that damage dealt stat because that just shows how much he was actually doing on top of getting all those kills. He's getting people weak, he's injuring them, allowing his teammates to go in and finish kills. 
And you know what? He's picking up a bunch of kills at the same time. Interestingly, not a great deal of assist, though. So he must have been seeing all these kills through himself. And we saw time and time again how many body shots he got, how many double ones. And quite a lot of people challenged him, which I did find... You know, kind of prolific. Why would you challenge him, especially jumping out there? And we saw someone over in blue corner just poke up and go for this. Like, you know he's there. Why give him it? And then run across the red bridge. You know he's hunting for your face. Why would you actually just, like, lend him it on a platter? Yeah, it kind of seemed like they almost gave up towards the end yeah. right there. And it's, it's tough. But, I mean, once again... This is game number three. They're going to need to leave game number two behind. Uh, if we could get a look at the game series here uh, to see game number three, which is going to be Eden Strongholds. Now, interestingly, we can, we've seen Eden, not only Eden itself, but Strongholds, the game type, is a very comebacky game type. And some things can end a little bit random. You can be on an amazing spree, but if one team just starts to smash you and push you down on the spawn, they can get the three cap and everything can kind of go wrong. You're approaching this now, you're in XL Esports. Tell me, Mike, what's the play? How do we seal the deal and go to Worlds? Obviously, you got to get control of the rockets. you got to get control of the power-ups and, and the power weapons here. I know that sounds very cliche, uh, but you that's seriously the biggest and most important thing to do at the start of this match. And controlling the, the top catwalk and blue bend, those are, are, are iconically kind of the two you want to control. You leave nest, allow the other team to spawn over by red base, and keep them as far away as you can from the blue base by blocking those spawns over there. One person can kind of hang back with the sniper rifle, and th that sniper rifle uh, player can pick off so many kills from across the map. Uh, Sims, I overheard uh, you and uh, Dan talking about this earlier. Quick tip about strong, stronghold capture times. For one player sitting in a stronghold, it will take 10 seconds to capture. For two players sitting in the stronghold, it will take six seconds to capture. Three players, 4.5, and four players, four seconds. And this is why when, let's say, the score's 99 and one team's about to win, you will literally see four players just dogpile a hill. You know, they all jump straight in. I say hill, stronghold. They all just jump straight into the point. Bang, the hill is pretty much instantly captured. Yeah. Personally, and this is why on this kind of game type, you need to be running as a pack and running as a group because if you want to get one, it's really hard to be, and you shouldn't be, to be fair, you shouldn't be getting kind of in that scenario where you're trying to do one on your own because essentially you're kind of, you know, easy to kill. And that hill is going to take so long to spin around the stronghold to capture. If you've got a second person with you, one, it's going to go quicker. Two, you've got support. Exactly. And uh, let's talk a little bit more in depth with the strategy. Say you're losing. Say you're stuck at red base. You're stuck on spawn. You cannot get out. You have got nest. You cannot get catwalk and you cannot get blue bend. What you need to do, wait for overshield, wait for a power weapon to come up, and that's when you make your move when the chaos is happening. Here we've got the players from left to right. We've got Snakey, Creepeasy, Lunny, Riots. And for the other squad, we've got Renix, Hittaborg, Mephisto, and last but not least... Botanus. Big bad Botanus. And one thing I've got to say there is what, really, really quickly. You saw the, like, the level of hype on the above, clapping hands, getting going. Come on, boys, we're one game away from Worlds. But the bottom one was just look kind of... It kind of looks dead. Uh, so we're going to bring the overlays up, and we're going to be on board with Hitterbar coming straight off the spawn, running across bottom mid. I think he's going to go for Rockets across the sneak. He gets, actually gets the PP. Up we come. He knows the guy's going to be there. Charges it up. Doesn't actually land it because he got... He just fired it instead. One person runs in. Oh, oh why did he let that gosh. go? He's still able to get it, though. I thought that was a very big mistake happening. Oh. And this could turn into a very messy situation. No, he's going to be able to pick up that kill. Could have been dangerous, that one. He missed a few of them and let it go just a little bit too early. Grenade goes in. However, they're racking a bit of time up on the points, as you can see there. Two people side by side. And the amount of times I hear people, you scope in with that thing. That is like a Halo 2 homing beacon to your face. Yes, definitely. And that's a power weapon in itself. A lot of people don't use it and honestly it is so fast you honestly need to be picking that up especially when the other team has an overshield it is a game changer now on board with snakey over here uh, early early lead here just only 17 to 0 right now I mean this 
Anything can happen in Strongholds. That's one thing that we actually talk about time and time again. I hear players talk about how they love watching Strongholds because any team can come back from any time. Ooh. Beautiful kill by Snakey with the Rockets right there. He is taken down. Let's hop on board with Mephisto, who's trying to pick up the blue band. He's going to grab this blue band, I think. However, they need to be careful because the top midsection is under capture. Grenades goes in, looking for those hit markers. Doesn't get any. Bryce will try and challenge him down. He goes, looking for any people that want. He's got two players going back into that hill. They're still racking up points at the moment. Creepy he comes in he gives him the hot five he says no sorry the hot four he'll apologize he says no trying to grab a double kill he finds Renox gets a tangerine to the face burnt out down he goes all three points though now in the hands of team vitality mike yeah and i like the strategy they had at the start they had catwalk they had blue bend and they noticed that the other team was kind of getting over towards the blue side of the the map so what they did they come over to nest capture nest and it's kind of like it's clockwork they're just going in a circle round and round so they're playing it very well the, the, they're doing the kind of the, the basic play by the book setup uh, just holding two they're not being overzealous and trying to go for three we see teams try and do that all the time and uh, it ends up not working out for them really uh, getting a dominant lead right here 42 to 3 and they're playing this really well getting control of rockets now uh, I really like what we're seeing from them so we got both power-ups in the hand, and the, pretty much the power weapons, Rockets, OS, and Camo, all in the hands of Vitality. They're still getting points. They're about to hit the 50-point club. Bluebend is in the hand of XL Esports, and kind of at the moment, they just really need to carry on playing the game, hold the two. They don't have to challenge for the three. If they want to be a nuisance, though, I mean, is there really any times that you want to go for the full three cap, or would you always try and keep the two? Oh, that was a really bad nade. Sorry, Sims. Body had a... <laughs> had a bad nade that could have stopped him from capturing the catwalk. Unfortunately, his nade went too far, and that allowed them to capture the catwalk. Now, uh, they still have the lead. They're they still have two strongholds, but they are losing Nest right now. Body making a rush over to the Nest. Is he going to be able to stop this? No, he is not. Now we have finally seen the tide turn into Excel's favor. Lunny will challenge and manage to get away. Absolutely no idea. Wow, did he, did he walk across the rocky earlier on? Did I see them appear up in the top corner? I'm not entirely sure what happened. He must have called them out. Has to be a teammate picking them up. Lunny will come back to haunt his dreams. However, they are now two plots in the hand of XL Esports. They're getting some serious time on the board. Snakey will shut him down. Moving across the riots, it's Nakey just grabbing a double kill, as you can see from the kill feed there. Riots pushing Mephisto, helping his teammate out. It's going to be all three down. That was a lie. Fourth one is there behind him. That's going to be four down if they manage to get it. Guys coming off the respawn. Two cap is now in effect for XL. Loving the play right here from Riots. Just he's the initiator. He's flying, soaring, just all over. Ex uh, excuse me, not Excel. Vitality right now. He's leading the charge for the team. He doesn't care if he's going to die. He's just the distraction. He's being the nuisance, still being a nuisance you know he knew he was going to die he at least got that player to a one shot now they're not going to be able to just hop into nest right away and get that uh, stronghold so very good play by riots really showing why he's a veteran player and uh there's still a chance that they could get a comeback they just need to control catwalk and blue ben leave the nest they don't really need it it's okay let the other team spawn over there Bottom has managed to get away with his life. However, Riots gets called out. Two people shut him down. snakey has got the fresh OS. Rockets also in the hands of Lonnie. Snakey knows the player there. Just in his shields poke back up through the air. Gets the beat down, but doesn't get the kill. Finish him off as he's flying through the air. Catwalk currently uncontested. Still racking down. Excel putting more points on the board. But we've got to watch out for Bluebend, Mike. Bluebend is now about to be turned. Just seeing Lunny take down two people. There's a double kill coming out of Lunny there. One person flying through there. It's going to be Renox looking for Blue, but he needs to be careful of Lunny behind him. Yeah, we're really going to need to see Vitality just keep their composure here if they want to win this match. They were playing great off the start. They need to capture Blue Bend and keep Catwalk, which they just did. Now, if they can hold these two just for a bit longer, that will be the game. They'll move on to game number four. Vitality seems to have kind of pulled their teamwork together this match using the Rockets right there by Renix, picking up the double kill. Can he survive? Yes, he does. This is be a very clutch kill if he can get this. No, oh. he's taken down by the grenade of Creep Peasy. Let's hop on board with Creep Peasy now, who is not going to go for those Rockets, though. Maybe he didn't know that he had them. So those are just going to hang out there by the Rocket spot. Turns around, finds one. There's another guy, no shields down there. Splinters in, comes up. Does get poked himself by the Splinters, but he's got the stronghold in the back. 31 points, but you know what? There's only 20 left for Vitality. They could seriously win this, but they need to win their battles. That's an unfortunate loss there for Hitterborg. That could have been a great trade as we see him moving back up onto where the sniper rifle usually does spawn, but obviously not in this game. Tag going one-on-one -on -one with Bonus. Big kill from Riot's holy mother, and he also gets the conversion. Still points on the board. They're racking it up. I can see the comeback. They keep playing like that. 
Yeah, that was an incredible play right there. Just I thought Riots uh, was going to be able to stay alive right there. He almost got the double kill. Snakey now taken down. They are just trying to hold these two with their entire lives at stake right now. Lunny picks up the overshield. He's going to look to make a play right here, picking up a kill. And I don't know if he noticed. Rockets, Rockets. were right there. Yep. He's going to go for this kill first. Maybe he will revert back for the Rockets. I'm not sure. Yes, he does know that they are there. Two Rockets left. This is a big play there. Trip cap right now the trip camps about to come in the one -on -one oh one player. I don't know about that play right there I think he should have just kept the Rockets out there's no need to charge into red at that time you know they're gonna be spawning there just let them spawn you don't want to run into them because that's I mean you're pretty much giving them a free kill Lonnie looking to pick up a kill here on catwalk doing a good job getting that reset now just staying alive looking to stay alive here to, to not allow anyone to capture the catwalk still doing great and they're they're slowly making this comeback and you heard the call out we just see big danny riots appearing out of nowhere up on the right hand side jumps on the ledge to come and reset and give him some help looking across the creep easy he's a little bit of trouble one player does go down looking back on the top catwalk someone's pushing into top mid so that call out will come in and then another player is going to try and help him out hit a bog however in trouble one comes flying through the air that's going to be lunny that'd have been a huge kill two people down big double kill out of lunny with the bi6 down hit a bog and botanus to secure that top middle section triple cap is in effect mike they're racking up the points they're slowly bringing this back and they are closing in on worlds vitality looks like they are just falling apart right now they are getting stuck on spawn trap they're Lonnie. getting stuck in red actually let's see mephisto spawned at blue right now let's see if he can make a move he steps out into three players they say no we are going to win this match they are still three capped right now let's hop on board with riots who's in catwalk trying to stop this player from getting no two players in catwalk they need to get this and they need to get another stronghold if they want to win this match and they're about to indeed they're only three points away two more points i think that's going to be all she wrote as we see the perfect kill come up excel esports welcome to the world finals excel welcome to world my friends what a match we saw from excel i talked to riots earlier he could not believe that they made it this far so fast i mean incredible play from all these players riots showing why he's a true veteran snaky and lunny you know they made the right move one of their players quit they they swapped out havoc it seems to be working out for them they are going to world finals 20 grand is now in the bank as they will fly out to america to face the top 16 from around the world jubilation all across i do not think riots expected to be going to the america especially from being dropped off of infuse so early on quick look at the stats before we throw it down to this 20 for creeps easy we're going to see 19 for lunny 17 for snakey riot still 12 assists look at the assist though on the board 21 kills for mephisto a little bit of night and day from his previous game 16 14 and 9 for hitzeborg unfortunately they will be going home xl will advance into the semis the slaves were honestly about the same and the assists were about the same as well so it just came down to to who capitalized during those moments when getting overshield when getting camo when getting rockets uh vitality it seemed like they had it they just fell apart at the end of the match and i feel like every time we watch eden strongholds that's the same exact scenario that happens every time a team will get the lead off the start and then at the end they just they fall apart uh it, it just comes down to who's going to keep their composure once it comes down to that when the other team starts coming back there it looks like they're getting flustered they're not playing the right way they start charging going back and forth and just giving up deaths that they don't need to give up but excel i mean props to riots man they're gonna be happy they're gonna be very props happy to they're moving on they will meet aftermath we're already there and secured their place from the asian regional qualifiers so we now have aftermath and xl esports confirmed for the world finals next game we will be again sending one more team and then tomorrow we will send in yet another two but you know what it's kind of it's all for pride and money now pretty much they've obviously got 20 grand in the bank which you get the one percent for qualifying anyway they're already going to america they've pretty much sealed the deal and solidified everything they want kind of going to go play through the bracket now but they can relax you know can yeah. you imagine how much of a party in carnival these teams are going to be having tomorrow on championship sunday because oh. They're My gonna have a word. Blast. Obviously, they, moving into best of sevens as well. And their matchup, their next matchup after this, too, they're going to be playing either Fab or Pulse. So, honestly, 
Yes, they are happy. If I was in their shoes, I would be ecstatic. Yeah. That's going to make me play better for the next series. So these guys, I mean, they could go a lot further. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen with this team? That team definitely wanted the win. I think you could see the passion and determination in their eyes, and I think they're going to go further. I can see these team as they are possibly in the grand finals. But you know what, guys? We're going to throw it down for a quick interview. Stage, it's over to you. Well, yes, indeed, gentlemen. We do have our second team qualified for the Halo World Championships. I'm here with Snakey, which, uh, you know, definitely a name we've seen plenty of on the kill feed, on the right side of the kill feed anyway, mate. Excellent play from you and the rest of your team. Let's talk about it. Uh, the Team Slayer Coliseum, massive, massive uh, game for you. 22-3 yeah. and three it was, I think, obviously, with the sniper for the most of the game. And, like, you're just playing out of your mind. I mean, did everything just click in that moment? Was it, like facilitated by your teammates perhaps or was it just one of those standout performances that you do have every now and then um yeah it was definitely a thing that we've gone over you know uh not on that map i just get sniped and try to stay alive with it and then my teammates were really they done really well to keep me alive um yeah i was just hot put on the trigger and um yeah yeah i played well so i'm just happy that yeah, yeah, we got that w is that, is that a, something you try and play around normally on Coliseum or yeah. in that particular game? You're usually trying to play around yourself uh, with yeah, a sniper? Yeah, well, anyone that has a sniper, to be honest, because everyone on my team can like, hit shots. So anyone that does have a sniper, we yep. just try to play around him, keep him alive as long as possible, and you can see the damage you can do. Absolutely. Well, let's move on now to, of course, the last map, which honestly wasn't a great start for you guys. Uh, it was rough. It was 54 to 6 at one point. Wow. Was that That's, that, that, <laughs> literally, 54 to 6, <laughs> right? So. Really You've turned it around with, I don't know, like 94 to God knows what, 46 here yeah, 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 back yeah. at them. So that's a big turnaround. Tell me, what, what, play it out for me. You know, you yeah. see the scoreboard. Yeah. When did the switch happen and how? Um, I don't know. Like, I had a really slow start. I had overshield. I'd made a bad play with it. I died. And with the rockets that like, didn't come out at one point and I died. You know what I mean? So we got like a really slow start. But um, we just kept composure. And as soon as we got like a triple cap, I mean, just kept obviously communicating and it was just, yeah, just kept going. Even though it was done by so much, yep. we knew that we could come back and win. And once we was winning, it was pretty much our game. So no point did you really drop your head. And I mean, it's always uh, no. a nervous position to be in when you are the team that's losing that lead as well. Yeah. Good power weapon control towards the, uh, the end part of that map as well. You guys definitely seem to have it under wraps. Yeah. But here we are, qualified for, of course, the World Championships. But let's look forward to tomorrow now as well, because yeah. there's, there's more than just the prize money, bro. There's some pride on the line here. I mean, I mean what is it going to mean to you, to you to sort of be up in that grand final, even potentially take it away? Uh, yeah, I mean, everything. You know, I've won a tournament in ages, so it'll be a massive, like, confidence going into Worlds yep. if we can get this W or at least get into the finals as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Some good, good, some good teams. So am I, buddy. No doubt about it. Congratulations, Snakey. Well yeah, played, my thanks. friends. And uh, we will see you tomorrow, of course. Yeah, and definitely. we'll be seeing him at the World Championships later on this year. But let's throw it back down to our experts to have a bit of a yarn about this one. Thanks, bro. Well... Let's get into this next one. Joining me this time on the analyst desk, we do have the great talents of Ghost of the Army, Bravo, and we are joined by Buck57, who I did have to apologise to earlier as I couldn't work out which one he was from him and his brother. <laughs> but it is Buck57. Thank you all so much for joining us. All right, guys, let's kind of get the first impressions of what we thought. I mean, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a, a pretty confident 3-0. I know that in the third game, there was a little bit of shakiness right off the start for uh, Team Excel, but they did, you know, come back like... like uh, uh, Snakey just said right there, and then they, they proved that they, they dominated. Yeah, for me, it reminded me a lot of the, the Allegiance team that we saw at X Games, actually, right? Even when yep. they're down in the series, even when they're down in a game in a series that they're dominating, they're able to come back with this amazing comeback in game yep. three to still close it out, which I think speaks a lot to them, right? If they had won that series three to one, I think they'd look like a little bit of a lesser roster. Without a doubt. To close out 3 0 is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good series. Um, they, Game two was just Snakey going off and just basically wasn't touched. So, and then game three, he had confidence to go and pay, make them plays and win the game for them. Right, yeah. I mean, and do you feel like out here, well, I mean, like, games like that are able to just carry momentum into the next Yeah, definitely. One? Yeah, Halo 5 is really about momentum. So if you win a game, like, can go off in that game, you're confident in the next game, you'll challenge the 1v1 fights and win the pistol fights, and you can have confidence of winning them battles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, does the does uh, seeing a team kind of now finally qualify for the World Championship, does it kind of make you, like, want it more? Are you sitting there jealous? Going, I cannot yeah. wait. I cannot wait for our you're opportunity to get You're not the first team, are you? Yeah, I'm a little bit jealous. Yeah, I always, <laughs> always wanted to see us first, but um, we'll go through, um, hopefully, tomorrow. we got tomorrow morning, got our game. Um, so hopefully, we can go and follow them. But I'm really happy for XL and Riots because he came back. A couple of weeks ago, and now he's now going so to Worlds. Awesome. So it's, it's pretty crazy, wild. Yeah. yeah, it's a I'm pretty, pretty happy, wild yeah. story. He's yeah. an old teammate, so it's always good to see old teammates do well. Right. 
while we've actually kind of got your you're picking your brains here did you catch much of Matt one I know we kind of plucked you out from where you were hiding um, what did you make of the way XL kind of just approached this off the rip um, I thought they were just really, com really confident again. Like they've been, their confidence is definitely showing yeah. in this series. Um, they ran through and basically just dominated the whole, the whole game. Um, I feel like basically one player in their team always goes off in games, and they normally just kind of thrive off that. And yep. then they went through and just had a really good, easy win. Yep. Fair enough. All right, guys. I don't know if you have got anything to add to map number one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, map number one was pretty amazing. Uh, we saw Lunny have really just go off, not just in the slaying department, but also in the caption, you know, caption the flag and the objective department. Um, really getting that first flag run. I believe it was in in the first two minutes, and we see him get a second one, uh, you know, three minutes later. Very patient play again, just like, you know, Riot's kind of probably instilled on him. And the whole time, it felt like they were controlling top mid. It was one guy, it was two guys, they had a rail gun, they had camo. And, I mean, it just seemed like they really just took it away. Yeah. I mean, and then looking at game two, I mean, like you said, I mean, yeah. what Snakey did in, in game number two, I mean, I can't, I yeah. saw so many people talking about that game. I mean, was it 22 <laughs> and three? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. I think so. the numbers, and three. incredible job. So, so here's the thing that I can kind of ask you there, Buck. Um, how, I mean, what would you do if there's a player in that situation? How would you shut Snakey down? Because let's face it, you've played against this XL team, you've beaten this XL team, um, and yet Snakey just went that massive number. Could you shut him down? Yeah, I think it would have been a case <laughs> of just kind of um, communication. So I think that the Vitality had kind of um, a weak communication in that game. So they could, they knew where the sniper was most of the time, but were they were either calling out or calling out too late after they killed, got killed by them. Yep. So as soon as they see the sniper, called him out and then try and work on a strategy to go and take him down. Because he was literally running around, there's free reign on the map. It was insane. Yeah, I mean, we've seen actually, I mean, Sniper trying to do the same stuff. It feels like um, you, Buck 20, and uh, Jimbo are just collapsing, and yep. he's just sitting red flag corner, red cave, red it flag was, corner, red yeah. cave, right? And then also on Eden as well, just kind of rotating around. There's nothing you can really do about yeah. a sniper like that. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. It started off 7-3, to three, and we saw Mephisto yeah. with the sniper on red base, and we're like, okay, all right, you know, they're going to do something. <laughs> and then it's 24-7 to seven in, in charge of Excel. Then it's 30-17, to 17, and they're just running away with it. Yeah, you know, Snakey, he's, he's doing his business, but I have to say, I have to call out Mephisto. Uh, you know, there was one time where he was in a 1v1 battle, sniper to sniper. Uh, Blue Bridge was where uh, I believe Snakey was, and Mephisto was just grabbing the sniper over in that red rocket corner. And I mean, there was a chance. There was still a chance for them to come back, uh -huh. and he gets sniped once in the back and goes behind that little uh, the little corner, and instead of just waiting there for his shields, you know, ducking away, he jumps back out to try and get a quick scope, you know, all the way across the map against the guy who's 22-3 and three at that, right? Yeah. So it's just one of those types of things where it's like, why challenge, right? And, and you're challenging uh -huh. with the... I even saw challenges from that team, from Vitality. They were challenging from the fountain all the way to the rocket ramp. Right. And the guy had the sniper. Again, yeah. it's, it's just yeah, those gotta, types of things you can't be making mistakes. Yeah, I think Snakey had 15 power up and kills that game, so that basically won the game. Just hit power up <laughs> and kills alone. So it was crazy. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on to map number three then. The one that actually put XL over the top and sent them to the World Championship. Crazy. Uh, Ghost Yami, let's start with you then. I mean, yeah, that, that map three, uh, we thought that Vitality was about to make a comeback. And, you know, Mr. Underdog over here, we were trying to <laughs> trying to see something happen. I was like, Not okay, man. going up 2-0. Here comes the Halo comeback. 3-2 victory. Come on, make me, you know, make me right. But no, um, even though they were up 24-0, then 33-3, then 63-20 with triple caps, then Excels uh, said no and triple cap themselves. And next thing you know, it's like, tied 80-80 uh, and then they win and obviously as, as uh, the buck mentioned over here the momentum is crazy yeah. man uh, and, and on, on a game type like strongholds on Eden yeah. I mean you can really swing it into your favor yeah absolutely I mean what, what I was going to say was I had Gaskin actually elbowing me he's like hey man imagine if this went to five games and then about two minutes later I was like what were you saying because uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, Excel just okay. to, they looked too strong and mm. like I said it's a kind of indicative to me of a team that doesn't want to drop unnecessary losses, right? I mean, they Correct. easily could have let that game go, right, if they didn't really yep. get on their horse and win that. Uh -huh. uh, but to me, it says a lot about teams that are able to close out a Series 3-0. I mean, especially when coaching triggers down back in the day. Oh, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I remember the BTH Series when with Neighbor grabbing the ball on, on a lockout oddball. Even though it's a 3-0, and you could have easily won the series three to one, drop yep. that game. That means a lot for your tournament momentum, right? You want to close out each series three. You don't want to give really any teams any slack. No. Yeah, definitely. I think at the end of the game, they kind of just knew what they had to do. They spawned killed the, um, they had to hit the vitality a few times, then just got the control. And yep. it's easy, easy yep. one. So yeah, it's, 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 it's almost like a litmus test, you know? You yeah. go through these, these early rounds, and you're just going against these teams that you expect to win. And so as soon as you lose one game, you're like, okay, you know, that's yeah. a problem. It's a, it's a All right. 
Well, uh, but while we've got you here, I kind of want you to quickly predict the next game. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's Fabi versus Pulse. Yep. I think I've got that right on the right side of the bracket. Uh, who do you think is going to win that? Um, I have to put my money on um, Fabi. So if they're a really strong team, they just came out um, on top against Dignitas. So I think yeah. they've really got momentum behind them. Hopefully they can go for it and make it a 3 0. But it'll be exciting to see if any um, games come back on the Pulse side. So awesome. We played against Pulse earlier, and they were, they were a strong team. Um, but I definitely think uh, Fabi have the advantage in this series. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us actually here on the panel. We've taken out your busy time to kind of come gracious with your present. All right. Well, everybody at home, remember to jump on that social media hashtag HaloWC. Tell us what you think. Who are you rooting for? Who's winning this next game? Because it's coming up right after the break. Pulse versus Fabi. E. Don't go anywhere. Assassination. Assassination. Assassin. Assassin. 